God bless you folks. Last video. Last video. It's good to be with you. Uh, we're looking at this booklet. You can get this booklet. Uh, it's called uh, WW. You can get it at www.newlifepublishing.co.uk www.newlifepublishing.co.uk okay so it's called the delusion of evolution the delusion of evolution it's a cracking booklet uh, Mike's lent me this and uh, the delusion of evolution get a booklet get this booklet buy it in bulk and pass it to university students pass it to to all sorts of people, buy it in bulk and pass it on. It is absolutely brilliant booklet, cracking booklet. Okay, so I'm going to read a few quotes. We take the side of science naturalistic in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just so stories because we have an a priori commitment to materialism and that materialism is an absolute for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Professor Richard uh, Lewonton Professor Richard Lewon Tin, leading geneticist. Virtually all the fundamentals of orthodox evolutionary faith have shown themselves to be either of extreme doubtful validity or simply contrary to fact. So basic are these erroneous assumptions that the whole theory is now largely maintained in spite of rather than because of the evidence. Dr. C. Custance, fellow of Royal Anthropological Institute a member of the New York Academy of Sciences. So, first of all, there is a naturalistic commitment to evolution. So, the 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 mantra is: oh, we believe in science. We believe in science, and evolution is science. And but the reality is, there is a a biased. And the bias is that we mustn't allow God in the picture, and therefore we must have evolved. That's the bias, basically. And if there is no God, then we must have evolved, so we'll go and find the evidence to prove that we've evolved. But that's biased. It's not looking at it objectively. It's looking at it with an agenda. And so uh, Professor Richard Lewontin is correct when he says, we take the side of science, naturalistic, in spite of the patent absurdity and some of its constructs, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community, for unsubstantiated just so stories because we have no a priori commitment to materialism because we have an a priori commitment to materialism and that materialism is an absolute for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door I mean that is the most clearest devastating critique of evolution I've ever seen the anti-supernaturalistic bias in modernistic thinking has been a major factor in the spread of evolution. Not the evidence, but the anti-supernaturalist bias. Dr. C. Curtis says, virtually all the fundamentals of orthodox evolutionary faith have shown themselves to be, in, to be either of extremely doubtful validity or simply contrary to fact. So basic are these erroneous assumptions that the whole theory is now largely maintained in spite of rather than because of the evidence. Dr. C. Curtis uh, Custance, fellow of Royal Anthropological Institute and member of the New York Academy of Sciences. So, what are the fundamentals of the evolutionary process that have, have fallen into bits? I mean, I mean, take the issue of uh, natural selection and mutation. I mean, to say that that is the mechanism that has produced all this variety. I mean, that cannot be substantiated in any shape or form. And that's why evolutionists are trying to seek new models. Also, the uh, looking at the uh, paleontology, 
and looking at fossil records. Fossil records don't stack up the way the evolutionists have traditionally said. They've had to change it to punctuated equilibrium or something else. But it doesn't stack up to what they're saying. Um, So, Dr. W William Dembski says, Before evolution was a twinkle in the eye of Darwin, most scientists believed that the world was created. After Darwin's rise to success, those who still believed in the designer were pushed to the margins. Billions of pounds have been spent to try to find evidence for evolution in the 150 years since, yet nothing solid has shown up. In fact, modern evolutionary theory is far removed from Darwin's original idea because it has to be revised so many times to try to get round the sheer lack of evidence. In the last 10 or 15 years, those same scientists have developed a theory that is much more logically satisfying than evolution and explains the evidence much better. Intelligent design theory, as a result, is gaining ground and the establishment is rocking, but due to the stranglehold over the media, that evolutionists maintain few people in this country have ever heard of it. One of the key players in the development of ID is Dr. William Dembski. William is a William is an associate professor at Baylor University and has done postdoctoral work in mathematics at MIT, in physics at the University of Chicago, and in computer science at Princeton University. He also holds a BA in psychology, an MS in statistics, a PhD in philosophy a doctorate in mathematics and a master of divinity. Densky describes the new theory what intelligent design does is identify signs of intelligence or design behind biology using precise criteria. It is an ambitious scientific program but we want to do more than just identify the effects of intelligence in biology. We want to see if we can get biological insights through ID that we couldn't get otherwise. So the intelligent design movement um, is really uh, Paley's uh, argument really brought, brought to modern times really. Paley's argument was the idea that you know if you walked across the sand and you saw a watch you wouldn't conclude that it just came by chance you know. And that argument was a powerful argument and it took a long time for evolutionists at the time of Darwin to dismantle. But even uh, Richard Dawkins had to come back to that argument in The Blind Watchmaker. And even Dawkins in his book, The Blind Watchmaker, uh, I, I was quite taken aback really. He is this brilliant scholar. And because he knows a lot about bats, he concludes that because he knows a lot about bats, he can say that we've evolved. And there was a lot of logical jumps, a lot of logical uh, flipping, without any real um, documentary evidence to back up evolution. It, just because you know a lot about bats doesn't mean to say that you can prove evolution. So The Blind Watchmaker by Dawkins was a complete utter fail um, to prove evolution. And, and as a consequence, he's tried to cover his tracks by writing other books but uh, it's quite a good detailed uh, Dr. C.F.C. C. Mayer over the last 25 year years biologists have discovered an exquisite world of nanotechnology with living cells hardly simple glo uh, global gobbles of plasm envisioned by Darwin's contemporaries. So there, you know, there's the complexity of the cell. So how could that have come by chance? And the, there's an obvious design within the cells, you know, the complexity of it. And uh, Dawkins says, I believe, but I cannot prove that all life, all intelligence, all creativity, and all design anywhere in the universe is the direct or indirect product of Darwinian natural selection. I believe, but I cannot prove 
that all life, intelligence and all creativity and all design anywhere is in the universe is the direct or indirect product of Darwinian natural selection. Now, here's a point. How many times has Dawkins been on the television and said, Christianity is not true, evolution is true, we evolve, it's completely right, it's completely solid, and here he admits that it's not a fact. So... What was considered to be a major piece of evidence showing that the Neanderthals once lived in Northern Europe has fallen by the wayside. We are having to rewrite prehistory. Uh, Chris Stringer, Head of Human Origins of London Natural History Museum. Mm. So basically, you know, we're having more and more archaeological evidence, you know, and we have to rewrite history because we say, well, we came from here and we did this and we did that, but then we find more information and, and it's not the case. Here's an example of a fish that was said to be millions of years old and then we found one. So it wasn't millions of years old. <laughs> so here it is. The cola, a living fossil, the cola, uh, the col ecanth is an outstanding proof that evolution is not taking place, at least among the species. The fish was once thought to have died out 65 million years ago. Its fossil had been dated as old as 340 million years before present. But living examples were found swimming happily about in the Indian Ocean of South Africa. In 1938, totally unchanged from the supposedly ancient fossils, either no evolution took place over many millions of years, or the fossils are not 340 or 65 million years old. Either way, the colocanth defies evolution. There we are. Look at it. Evolutionist. Eat your heart out. Come on. Abandon it. It's a joke. And, and what, what the internet atheists do? and the atheist on the internet is they'll blind you with science because they'll, they'll, they, some of them are like some of them are like computer scientists or uh, working for the new government on nuclear projects so they're quite scientific and quite clever some of them and these internet atheists come on and they, they bangle you with their scientific knowledge but the reality is the reality is that it's very evolution is very easy to debunk you have Natural selection, I've used this argument against uh, people, I, 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 I use this argument against a PhD, an academic at Liverpool University, right? And when you use this argument, it's undefeatable, it's in, it's, it's, you cannot defeat the argument. And the argument is this, anybody with Arthur Brain, anybody with any intelligence, you come up against a PhD in biology. I came up against a PhD in biology at Liverpool University. And he was saying, I've, I can give you evidence for the, for the development of the body and all the rest of it from evolution. And he was blinding me with science. And I just said this. No, let's see, you know your eye. I said, what is the mathematical probability of evolution developing the eye? From natural selection to mutation, what is the mathematical probability? And he walked away. Because if you've got half a brain and you sit down and you just work out the mathematical probability of the eye developing, let alone the whole human body, let alone the brain, you would give evil you would give up evolution in a flash. There were mathematicians in the nineteen sixties that worked on the probability of evolution and they came to the meeting of the evolutionists and they these were secular mathematicians and they presented their findings said evolution is just statistically an impossibility and the information was put under the side and it was hid away you know because anybody with half a brain knows that the complexity of the human brain the complexity of the eye the complexity of the body the complexity of nature could not have happened by pure just mutation and natural selection it's an impossibility
Well, these people who think they're so clever about science and scientific knowledge and all the science, 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 and try to blind you with science because you don't know about the intricacies of the cell, or you don't know the intricacies of the uh, the development of the whale or, or whatever. They can try and blind you with all this. But the heart of evolution is the mechanism. And the mechanism does not make sense when it comes against mathematics. So, here's a, here's a finding here in a rock, so let's read that. One of the most unusual findings to challenge the vast ages of geological time in recent years was the discovery of a well-preserved soft tissue of Tessanororus rex. The flesh included blood vessels was found inside the fossil's thigh bone. of a T-Rex buried in 1,000 cubic meters of sandstorm in Montana, USA, in 2005 reported in the National Journal of Nature at astonished Montana State University, Dr. Mary Schweizer. This is certainly not something I ever dreamed I'd see. Why the shock? Because flesh is not supposed to be able to de avoid decay for 70 million years. This report admits that the scientists still don't know how this dinosaur tissue has remained preserved for so long. Since the Montana discovery, soft tissue has been found in several other dinosaur specimens too. The obvious conclusion is that the fossils is far younger than evolutionary estimates. But to admit that the millions of years dating system might be vastly overestimating the age of the rocks and fossils is too much for evolutionaries to bear. It would destroy evolution which is inconceivable without hundreds of millions of years within which to work. If dinosaurs walk the earth with the humans and life is thousands rather than millions of years old, the old explanation can be an intelligent designer and a powerful creator at that. So they found tissue of dinosaurs in bone. And I know that from the date that they found that was at 2005 to now, there have been so many theories and ways to argue uh, why this tissue was preserved. If you as a young person believe those theories, you, you need help. You need help. Tissue found of dinosaurs, logically speaking, if they're 70 million years old, we shouldn't even find a speck of dust, let alone tissue. Evolution is a complete, utter myth. If evolution is true, why is it that when there are peer-reviewed articles written to critique it, i.e. people who are into intelligent design, they are sacked from their job or they are suppressed and not published? Look at the Samothian Samothian Institute controversy. Just Google the Samothian Institute controversy and go to the scholar who was sacked from his job and see the documentation that he's provided of how the intellectual establishment of America tried to suppress him. Public, he was pro-evolution but he wanted people to study intelligent design and he, he got um, he got the uh, he got uh, the scholar to publish his article in the in, in the secular magazine because he was the editor, and the academic world rounded on him and he lost his job. There's a lot of politics going on amongst evolutionists. You know they're not as scientific as they make themselves out to be. They say we're objective, we're scientific. And, they tr and, the, and, the, and on the internet, they'll get these, like, uh, people who are what I would call snake oil academics. Snake oil. You know, people who go around selling snake oil, like, years ago, as if it would heal you. And so they'll, they'll, they'll get these snake oil academics, people who, who haven't got proper PhDs or proper academic credentials. 
and they'll debate them on evolution and creation. But they won't debate the better PhD, the proper academics, who really can expose evolution. They won't have them on and filmed. They won't allow peer reviews being done on articles and PhDs that criticise evolution. So. So there's so much here we could talk about. Here's an interesting thing. We'll we'll go on this and then we'll finish. So there's Dr. Macintosh, I think it is. Principles of thermodynamics, even in open system, do not allow a new functional biological structure to be achieved without new machinery already being in place. Andy McIntosh, Professor of Thermodynamics at Leeds University, responds to claims by evolution that the second law of thermodynamics is no problem for evolution because the Earth is an open system. In their eyes, all you need to do is to add the sun's energy and the fairy tale of evolution will come true. McIntosh shows that sunlight is no help at all because biological machines would have been needed to harness the energy in order to create biological machines. So some of the most well attested scientific laws such as thermodynamics shows that I, I, I actually asked, and this is the truth, I was at the full gospel men's meeting and I asked um, a nuclear scientist about evolution and he said well one of the laws of science is thermal, thermodynamics where things are running down deteriorating in the universe that things lose their energy and we go from order to disorder and uh, he said that's one of the most well attested laws in science and evolution contradicts it because evolution is we go from order to more order to more order thermodynamics says no we go from order to disorder so the two are on a, a different path so we have the universe going to disorder so we've got the universe here this is the universe going to disorder but evolution is supposed to be going to order. There's a contradiction. Evolution is in the universe and so there's disorder coming. Yeah? So evolution contradicts one of the main laws. Now the, evolu the internet atheists um, and sceptics and will say, oh, that's physics. It's not biology. Well, I'm sorry. It's part of the universe, sister. It's part of the universe, bro get used to it everything's going to disorder so evolution can't be true it, it's 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 a contradiction so okay we come to the end of the videos these were apologetic videos I hope they've been a help to you today and um, I wanted to do the one on the Quran particular today but I hope that what I've shared with you today has been a help and a blessing and I hope it's been edifying to you. I know a lot of it's technical stuff, but sometimes technical stuff has to be done to show that Christianity is true. Okay? So I hope it's been a blessing to you and a help. God bless you, and thank you for listening. God bless.